In case you didn't have enough of Dan and Kyra destroying your projects, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna go over exactly why these climbers failed, and of course, give you lots of tips, tricks, training advice, and some rehab tools along the way. Okay, Jason, Jason, pay attention. <laughs> I was looking at my notes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut it. See, that's actually the, the hand foot match that I, I like, that it feels easy to me. Although I don't like that the different climbers Whoa. let out. Cool, That's right? wild. This is not how I do this climb. Oh. Wow. Mew to see to be fair. Mew to see to be fair. I actually go left hand again to this one, and it puts you in a better position, and then end up right hand on this Gaston, mm. so that you can really like kind of brace between this hand and this foot yeah, with a right hand sense. here on the, uh, the blue circle to really boost all the way left hand mm -hmm. to this good yellow hold. One, two. Three, four, five, it's it's six, a big yeah. move and it's pretty hard if you're short. Um, but this hold is really directional that he's on this I one, see. and yeah. so I think it's just really hard to actually get under it efficiently. Yeah. You can't like yeah. twist your shoulders and you get really caught up. Though if this were to work. Yeah 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 yeah. Ooh, <laughs> three fingers. Ah. If you get into a compromised position and things are feeling like kind of bound and kind of difficult, and you then start thinking about where you're trying to go rather than what your body's doing, see how you kind of like, you can see him kind of like look up at it and he tries to just kind of like whop over there without really taking the time to settle his body. And so it can be really helpful to think more about like where you want or need your body to line up, where you want your head to be, like some other cue about how you want things to feel and engage, and then the hand should be sort of secondary. Uh, actually, that's present focus is what I've learned mm -hmm. that as uh, mm -hmm. from my sports psychologist for like competitions and stuff. It's really easy to get caught up on thinking about the finish hold. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you're thinking about the finish hold and whether that be even like matching, like, oh my God, I've already done the climb. Yeah. If you're not careful about the body position, it's really easy to mess it up. It's like yeah. think about what you're doing, not what you're about to do. Yeah, that's a great point. It's a lot of stress on the posterior shoulder. And it's definitely a, a theme I see quite a lot. There's no posterior shoulder training, no external rotation training, or at least it doesn't play a large enough role to prevent injuries in a lot of climbers. If you do like an anchored horizontal abduction, which we can show, or even if you have access to cable machines and can do like a cross delt horizontal abduction, you can work on some posterior delt and some mid low trap activation. If you notice like you're trying to work on a project that has this and you have a lot of stress on your shoulders, those would be useful exercises. All right, Ooh. hipster rig is the name of this one. Mm -hmm. All these three finger holds, ugh. Mm. They're only three fingers if your fingers are big. <laughs> oh, does oh, he go for the bump? You're under. Okay, now just. Uh, <sighs> by the way, this video is not sponsored by anyone. So if you'd like to support your own climbing goals while supporting the work we do on this channel, consider using our affiliate links. This includes bestsellers like the Tindeck Progressor, which you'll get $10 off when you use our link. Another fan favorite is the Frictitious Doorway Mount, which we featured multiple times in our videos. You can even buy literally anything from REI through our link, and it'll help us keep this channel running. I mean, you almost made it look as good as I did, but <laughs> not quite. What happens is that he loses the foot, obviously. When he loses it, his accuracy on the hand kind of diminishes. Yeah. And so if you can really keep that pressure once you're in the same spot, so like almost exactly what he did do, but then keep the pressure on the foot through actually getting your hand on this hold. It can then cut, mm -hmm. but then I think it allows you to hit this more accurately. Yeah, come on, Dan. You. Nice. Oh. Beautiful. 
To keep the foot on, the left foot, I am really focusing on staying open and thinking about it as rocking across to kind of clamp between these two points. And then I'm sort of balancing with the right foot. So as we've talked about in a lot of these videos and things in the past, the off foot kind of helps you sort of like stance up and stabilize while you're creating the sort of balance and pressure between uh, the two sort of like primary points. All that said though, I think that while it's a useful body tension and kind of cool feeling, it probably just is easier to just jump left foot like Kyra did. An accuracy tip, something that's pretty easy and works in almost all situations that I don't see enough people take advantage of is kind of the idea of like aim small, miss small. It can be really tempting to just blast at like the black crimp or whatever you're going for, but a lot of times that doesn't give you much of a tool for refinement if you miss, um, and it makes it really easy to kind of be all over the place. So it's not the only trick, <laughs> but it can be really helpful to aim for specifically a logo or a mark or a, um, the bolt hole or something. If you can find something that's sort of like one or two fingers and use that as kind of like the anchor or bullseye that you're going for, then you can kind of work around it. And if you find that you're overshooting or undershooting, you can be like, okay, like maybe not the middle finger, maybe the ring finger for the bolt hole, or you can like pick a slightly different point. So anyways, works well, works often. Um, it's kind of the same idea with like tick marks and things outside, but getting in the habit of aiming for like a specific part of a hold rather than a hold as a whole um, is really useful. Yeah, it's got a mono. First hold looks terrible. You don't have to really use it. It's a fake hold. We're gonna pinch it, it's fake fine. Hold. Well, this is oh. supposed to be easier than hipster rig, huh? Yeah, it's just to force you to do that cross under is why the, you start on the mono. Ooh. Oh, okay. Ooh. Okay. That's fun, beta. Oh, yeah. Okay. And Kyra, you were saying that you don't really use this hand, right? You just, yeah, use, like, you just use the mono? Exclusively use the mono. Okay. <laughs> All right, three fingers. <laughs> we call that the bird nest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Emotional, damn. If you've never tried beast maker holds, they're okay. pretty comfortable. Ow. Ew. <laughs> Come on. Ew. Nice. Ooh. That was cool. Oh, look at that. Wow. Smash. Ah, <sighs> I see what's happening now. They're making me go first so they can copy my beta. And that's why it's so easy for them afterwards. Hi, Stan. Oh, okay. Cool. That's different. Oops. Oh. Boo. Boo. Yeah. My tendies are no good. <laughs> This is another classic issue, and it's hard to do things about all the time, and even worse, it's sometimes the right thing to do. He gets his foot up, but instead of, I mean, it's so high, it's like pretty impressive that he gets it there to start with, but when you just rock up like this, you're stuck now. What happens is as soon as you let go, he's immediately falling away, right? So there's no, there's no real momentum to carry you up and kind of use this bounce to kind of support you against the fall away from gravity. And so your only choices really are like absolutely obliterate this hand to keep force here or find some way to get a little bounce. So for most people, certainly at least trying to carry a little momentum into these positions is almost always the thing to do. Not always possible, but always desirable. This way is gonna be really shouldery and it's just gonna be hard to avoid just like flying out and trying to lasso this thing. You can kind of generate that bounce with your lowest foot. He ends up taking it off and then trying to be in this like really strong position. But instead, if you kind of generate that bounce by starting from down here with your foot here, your right foot isn't doing much yet, but you can kind of treat it as like a one, two, three motion of like, first you bounce off the right foot, then you pull with the arms, and then finally you press up with the foot. And so it's kind of like a one, two, three. Yeah. I think you see really good climbers end up doing this like kind of all as one motion and it looks really smooth, but it is kind of that three part thing of bounce off the bottom foot and then 
generate with the arm and then finally generate off the foot to get to the position. And a great argument for training some mobility. Yeah. One of the Sporting things I, I kind of thought of too is even just as he's sinking in this position, mm -hmm. it made me think again about like how stretched out, like the shoulders, but let's talk about instead like our mid-back and even rhomboids. Yeah. If you do any mid-back training and you're stopping your like motion without allowing that weight, like think about like a bent over row. Yeah. If you're not allowing that weight to kind of sink all the way forward yeah, and stretch. stretch those muscles out, you're actually not training the muscles to be strong and resilient in that length and position. Kind of like yeah, that. and this is just a perfect example of how lengthened those muscles are here. So having that training is gonna be very useful as you're pulling yeah. through those moves. So if you're like stopping short here, it's not like it's the worst thing, like you're ruining this exercise. You're just leaving some potential gains and some like resiliency at the end range of the muscle on the table by not going through that nice full range of motion. And again, you don't have to like break it into two spots. You don't need to stop and then lower. You can make it one nice continuous motion, but it's okay to also kind of like feel that difference between protracting and not. And that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching and thanks to Mace Rim for hosting us. And an extremely special thank you to Kyra who absolutely smashed it this episode. So thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me.